Welcome to this week's SI Aerospace Report. This is our second episode, and the entire space intelligence team is still buzzing with excitement from all the positive feedback we got from our first report. I'm your host, Small Stars, and I'm very pleased to be representing Space Intelligence's worldwide network of experts, photographers, and creators, bringing you the very latest in spaceflight news from around the globe. Let's strap in and launch right into it. Last week's launch schedule was supposed to be very eventful. We expected ULA's Delta Heavy 4 launch, two separate Falcon 9 SpaceX launches, Rocket Lab's I Can't Believe It's Not Optical, and a Starship SN6 hop. Most of these events were delayed due to bad weather conditions, and at one point it seemed like we wouldn't see any of them at all. But our patience eventually paid off. Let's go through it all in chronological order, starting with the first scrubbed launch attempt of the week, ULA. Originally set for Wednesday, ULA's Delta IV Heavy launch of its classified NROL-44 payload was attempted early Saturday morning. All was going well until the T-minus four minute mark when we had our first hold, due to a sensor reading below nominal temperature. However, ULA teams were able to work through the issue and quickly resumed the countdown. Then as we finally reached T-minus zero, the engines ignited and started to fire up, but in a dramatic twist, they were turned off moments later, which marks the first ever launch to be aborted after ignition in ULA's long and remarkable history. Next up was SpaceX's Starlink mission. Originally expected to happen on Friday, it got delayed to Sunday and was postponed yet again to Tuesday, September 1st, due to bad weather. Meanwhile, tensions are rising because with Starlink and other planned mega constellations, the future of ground-based astronomy seems heavily endangered. If you're interested in learning more about how these satellites will negatively affect observations, check the link in the description. Shortly after the Starlink scrubs, SN6's hop also got scrubbed. Starship prototype serial number six was supposed to perform a test flight, hopping up to 150 meters, or about 500 feet in altitude, before coming down to a soft propulsive landing, like in this footage from SN5. The hop looked like a go, and operations proceeded through the 10-minute warning siren, but the engines never fired. Without an official statement, we can only speculate why the hop was called off at the last minute, but we think it's because of strong winds. SpaceX's launch of the SAOCOM-1B Earth Observation Satellite for Argentina's space agency was subject to several delays and remained heavily dependent on ULA's NROL-44 launch due to security reasons, as both missions were to launch from neighboring pads at Cape Canaveral's Air Force Base in Florida. After ULA's scrubbed attempt, SAOCOM-1B was finally able to launch on Sunday from Slick 40, making history as the 100th launch for SpaceX, and what a perfect flight to mark this milestone. Not only did we see a flawless mission, including a really smooth return to launch site touchdown of the already previously thrice flown booster, we also got some very special views during this flight. We were able to see staging, boost back burn, and fairing separation through the lens of a ground-based camera. We've never seen anything quite like this before, looking down at the grid fins as they cut through the clouds in the twilight. This mission was also the first time since the 60s that anyone has launched into a sun-synchronous polar orbit from Cape Canaveral. Such an orbit requires the spacecraft to head south from Florida, and in 1969, the U.S. dropped rocket debris on Cuba, killing a cow, which really didn't help with political tension during the Cold War. Okay, back to the present. A few hours after the SAOCOM 1B launch and beautiful landing, it was Rocket Lab's turn for their 14th mission, designated I Can't Believe It's Not Optical. The mission was rescheduled several times due to weather concerns, keeping our designer Karthik quite busy updating our famous space intelligence infographics. Shortly after 0300 UTC Monday morning, Rocket Lab had a successful liftoff from Launch Complex 1 in Mahia Peninsula, New Zealand. All went well as the Electron rocket carried the Sequoia radar observation satellite, developed by Capella Space, to low Earth orbit. It was Rocket Lab's first success since they failed to reach orbit on their previous mission, which was ironically named Pix or It Didn't Happen. So that's all for the launch events of this past week. Now let's take a look at the latest, coming out of Boca Chica, Texas, where SpaceX is shaping the future of spaceflight. We already spoke about the SN6 hop, or lack thereof, which we were very excited about. But we're even more excited about SN8, 
Elon Musk announced that unlike SN5 and 6, SN8 will sport a nose cone and canards, making it the very first fully stacked Starship prototype since Mark 1 of last year. So who else is excited to see SN8 take to the skies and perform that insane skydiving maneuver planned during its 20 kilometer test flight? Let us know what you think down below. The latest level of SpaceX's new high bay was added. Bluezilla, the space community's nickname for the huge blue crane, did quite a fantastic job at assembling it. Teams will be working on the roof in the coming days. Soon we will start to see the first super heavy prototypes being stacked inside of the high bay and Elon tweeted that he plans to have the first booster hop test as soon as October. Could this be an example of the notorious Elon time? We'll keep you posted. Moving down to an earlier model, it seems obvious that the Starship prototype SN5 is now waiting for its turn on the launch pad as indicated by the repairs done on it, including replacement of its top composite overwrapped pressure vessel, or COPV. Meanwhile, parts for SN9 have been spotted on site as work crews continue to work day and night to keep up with the continuous testing flow for all of these prototypes. Last week we reported on the space community's heated discussion about if this project here was a water tower or an orbital launch pad, and now the verdict is in. Elon Musk made it clear that this is indeed the start of a future orbital launch pad. As we stated before, we should start seeing the first tests of Starship's Super Heavy booster very soon, and it looks like the booster prototypes will likely lift off from the new pad. As we reported last week, SN 7.1 is still planned to be used as a pressure tester, which will test new steel alloy for future prototypes. And lastly for the news coming out of SpaceX's Boca Chica facility, a huge steel wall is now being erected at the launch site. The wall will obstruct some views we're used to seeing, namely the view of Starhopper and the current launch pad, but our photographers and videographers will still deliver great new content from other vantage points. Moving on, let's talk about NASA really quickly because they have a full-scale SLS booster test which will be taking place this week. Through the first two minutes of flight on operational missions, the 17-story tall solid rocket boosters will produce 75% of SLS's 36,000 kilonewtons or 8 million pounds of thrust. The booster test will be broadcast live on NASA TV Tuesday, September 2nd at 2.40 p.m. Eastern or 18.40 UTC. The European Space Agency's Vega comeback flight, flight number VV-16, is scheduled to happen on September 2nd as well. After last time's failure, Vega will have to prove it can be a reliable rocket again. With this launch, Ariane Space plans to put into orbit 53 satellites on the small spacecraft mission service proof of concept flight performed on behalf of 21 customers. It's clear that Ariane Space wants to prove they're ready to answer the ever-growing demands of the small sat market. Speaking of small sats, the Spanish aerospace company PLD Space is developing a family of reusable micro launchers to provide suborbital and orbital launches for small satellites and payloads. PLD revealed this video showing their Tepital B engine passing a series of thrust vector control tests. PLD plans to use the Tepital B for its suborbital Miura 1 rocket. For more information, check out their website. There's a link in the description. Continuing to shift our focus around the world, the development of the next-gen Soyuz 5 rocket is making progress. NPO Energomash is working on its new rocket engines RD-171MV for the first stage and RD-124MS for the second stage, and tests are expected to continue through the entirety of 2021. Unlike RD-171M, RD-171MV is completely made from Russian components and features a new control system. It also burns a mixture of natural gas and liquid oxygen in its four combustion chambers, which replaces the RP-1 used in all of their previous engines. Work has also begun on the modernization of the single-chamber RD-191 for the Angara rocket family, which should boost its thrust by 10%. First tests on this engine are not expected to be happening before mid-2022. China has a very busy launch schedule coming up, including three Kuaizu 1A launches in September alone. Kuaizu, meaning speedy vessel, is part of a family of quick reaction orbital launch vehicles developed by X-Space, a subsidiary of China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. China is also making progress towards their International Lunar Research Station, which is planned to be built in the South Pole region of the Moon. China is currently seeking partners and has already talked with Roscosmos and ESA. 
They're looking to establish a long-term human presence on the moon sometime between 2036 and 2045. What a week! It started out looking grim, with all the scheduled launches being delayed, but at the last minute, SpaceX's SAOCOM mission and Rocket Lab's I Can't Believe It's Not Optical came to the rescue, giving us a couple of the most beautiful launches ever. Now we can look forward to reporting on all of the postponed launches in next week's report. So make sure you like and subscribe for more space intelligence each and every week. And for more cutting edge updates, details, and insights, go to Space Talk 101 and join us on Facebook where our team posts informative content around the clock as space stories unfold. This has been your weekly report from Space Intelligence. Small stars out.